was the baby I've been captivated on every single moment, every single moment we spent. Safety in silence, ignoring the truth. Stayed focused on the fact that I'm still here with you. Caught up in the moment, lost in it too. But I know that reality will set in soon, and I don't wanna forget you. Without the 
Spending hours and hours pretending we have plans and we have places we should visit, but everybody knows your twenties are for wasting time. Yeah. So you could be with any one you wanted. You could take that job they offered and move down by the ocean, but I love the way you. Feels when it's under mine. Yeah. I don't wanna take the world for granted while I'm still trying. 
trying to understand it The more I live I am convinced Everyone just wants to be in love of little life we take for granted when we finish our Decembers empty-handed but I'm, I'm never empty-handed when I'm holding your hand yeah. wow. Hello and welcome to Mogul House Live, everybody. It's Saturday. Uh, it's your favorite form of media, hanging out with us on Saturday night at the Mogul House. My name is Bishop and so glad to see you all in here. Hey, Big Al. Hey, Pastel. Space Monkey. Polly Paul. Hi to all of our friends. Mel, everybody. Thank you for coming and hanging out with us on your Saturday night. It's so fun. So glad to see you. Uh, we have a guitar that, has chosen to, uh, that was chosen tonight on the poll. It is the yellow one. Yellow Fender, which is a very nice guitar. It's not a, what kind of, who's good, what, explain this guitar. Uh, it's a custom, uh, special Telecaster. A custom special Telecaster. That's not the one you stole from me, right? The, the gold one? Oh, okay. Oh, okay, I just wanted to make sure, sorry. Sometimes I get them confused, I just want to make sure. Um, Sonata stole my guitar, everybody. Welcome into Mogul House Live. So glad to have you guys here. Again, my name is Bishop, and uh, every Saturday we hit right here on the show, we get to hear some amazing artists uh, that are local to California and some that are not. Uh, and tonight we have a special artist for you tonight. But before we jump into our performance, I want to also tell you that I would love if you would go and follow us on YouTube. We have a lot of artists that have come 
perform on our show every Saturday. And if you've missed them, you get to hear those performances back. They're cut up for you, so you don't have to watch the entire VOD unless you want to watch the entire VOD that's there as well. We have some of our other shows like Day Fest that just happened a couple weeks ago, which was insane, uh, with Ravel Day. And uh, that's on there. Uh, we've had other concerts that Mogul supports and happens that are on there as well and other performances. Um, and then we also have Broken Up Performance. We have shorts. Um, we have some more content coming out that is very cool very soon of stuff that's been happening in our studio at the Mogul House Studio up in Burbank. So all kind of crazy things. So if you want to stay up with us in content-wise, just go to our YouTube and follow us as well as you can follow us on Instagram, all the other things. Join our Discord. There's going to be some exclusive content coming out on Discord very soon, which is very, very exciting. Uh, so if you and I join our Discord and also uh, subscribed uh, to that special subscription, you may want to do that so you can see some of the exclusive content because you can't see it if you don't have the subscription. So, hey, check it out. Um, but hit that link in the chat as well. Uh, my name is Bishop again, and um, almost every week I'm here in this chair. Uh, we have different hosts as well sometimes. I think we may be getting Tudor back soon and all kinds of different hosts on this, in this chair. But I get to sit across from some amazing talent. Uh, before the show was going on, we were just listening to some of the performances beforehand. And I was just thrown away. Thrown away? Blown away? <laughs> yeah. Thrown away, what would that mean? That'd be something totally different, huh? Thrown, thrown away. It's like super impacted. Yes. So impacted. Yes. Like thrown. I, I like that. Yeah. yeah. I was blown and thrown away uh, because <laughs> literally, like, the talent just is crazy. There was one weekend we were playing a replay of Leone's performance here, and I just was like, yeah, it's just so good. So uh, I think today is going to be another one of those days where I sit here and I'm just wild because the artist we have across from us uh, is amazing. And I actually uh, found him on IG uh, through some, I can't even remember who posted him because I was just more enamored by the actual person that was on the on the screen. This dude can sing, he can write. And today is going to be a big day because there's a lot of exclusive things happening with his artistry. Uh, so I want to introduce him. His name is Charlie. Welcome, Charlie. How are you doing, man? I'm doing good. Well, Welcome to the Mogul House. Yeah, Thank yeah. So Clap for the form in the studio. <laughs> We're so glad to have you here, dude. Uh, so this is cool for us, one, because we get to hear you, but I hear you have a lot of changes happening in your career. Yeah. Uh, so first, tell me uh, the name that you want to go by fully, uh, because people probably who may be watching know you formally as... Formerly as Logan Smith. Logan Smith. And that's still my name, I should specify, but yeah. like my my artist's name is now Charlie Archer. Charlie Archer. Yeah. Okay, um, I'm going to ask about why later. Can okay. I ask why later? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Because that's, that's going to be a good good talking point. I would love to hear more about that. <laughs> yeah. uh, but where are you originally from, Charlie? Originally from Jacksonville, Florida. Jacksonville, Florida, yeah. home of the Jaguars. Yeah, go Jags. So when we had a... <laughs> Uh, quote unquote hurricane here, you probably laughed. Didn't I you? did, yeah, yeah. Everyone yeah. was really excited. People were buying a whole bunch of cases of water bottles yeah. and yeah. generators, getting and, gas. Right, it's just a it's Tuesday like, afternoon where I'm from. You guys, yeah, yeah, right, right. You guys don't know a thing, right? right. Yeah, that's actually very hilarious. <laughs> I lived in Orlando uh, for a good portion of years, and so. When they said hurricane here, I was like, you guys don't know mm -mm. that. And really, we didn't get them that bad there because we were in central Florida. Right. But Daytona and all, they used to get them worse than we did. So, right, right. Um, But that's good, bro. Uh, I, I want to hear some music. Uh, yeah. But before we get into that, I want to make sure, again, that our chat knows uh, that you can follow Charlie right now on all of his social. Just click the link that's in the chat that came up for you there. Um, and then also, uh, this is cool. Um, if you have any questions for Charlie, I'm going to be kind of asking some questions later. So just put Command Q in the chat and then write your question. So maybe it's Command Q, uh, Charlie, uh, what kind of shoes do you like? And then oh, I will God. get to ask those questions later on in our interview. So those will be chat questions that will come in uh, from our chat. Uh, but uh, without further ado, we have Charlie Archer here, and he's about to perform. Charlie, what are you going to be starting us off with? Uh, I'm going to start you off with a new one. Um, I wrote this in the park the other day. It's called If You Could Believe It. Take us away. I 
heart, I don't think I'm ready Do we kiss goodbye? I don't know if I should try I'll say I love you one more time Hold me, I'm unsteady down see i did this on purpose i did this on purpose see like i said i just wrote it in the park last thursday see there it is if you could believe it i hate my choice but i still think i need it something was always missing it wasn't you it's what i gave to keep it If you could believe it If you could believe it I miss you every evening I smile for you when I see someone reading If you could believe it Thank you. It's the most on-brand thing I've ever done to forget the lyrics to my own song. <laughs> In the parking lot on Thursday and do it live. I think that's pretty impressive. <laughs> Better than what we're all doing right now. So let's give it up again for Charlie. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, so this next one I wrote <laughs> yesterday, day before yesterday. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, Lord. So, <laughs> yeah, hold on he to your hats, call, Let's call this record the week. <laughs> The week. The week. Either that or the parking lot. show that night Bill and Dodge another fight Amber had the chance but missed the signs Molly did my buddy wrong Jordy wrote another song Seems like all the days keep rolling by And who gets 
Gets to be the one who makes the rules If I could, I'd change a thing or two Who said growing up meant leaving the place where I learned how That's all. Let me see. Yeah, that's all the ones that I've written this week. <laughs> no more from this week, I think. Oh, it's good. Yeah, no more from this week. We love, we love this week stuff. <laughs> good. Those are really good. Um, I, uh, I'm about to play some much sadder music. <laughs> um, but I, uh, I was talking to some of the other great folks who are here beforehand, and uh, I feel like, you know, a lot of people feel like their art is their purpose. And mm. I think there's value for that. Mm. Uh, for me, I don't think that music is my purpose in life. I believe it is my means of navigating it. Mm. And um, so there's a lot of navigation <laughs> that you'll hear in some of these sadder tunes. But uh, um, yeah. Uh, OK, so this is called Who Knows Me Better. I wish I was wrong about you I wish you were here to hold me close And wear my clothes It doesn't make sense when I think Of all the time lost in a blanket stroke the 
die on this hill Who knows me better I'm so Parts of me that believe she's gonna find me first. Cause who knows me better? Who knows me better? Thank you. Can I can I unplug this? Am I good? Thank you. Um, yeah, I uh, thank you so much for being. You guys are so awesome. You're so positive and welcoming, and I love it. No, I love it. That was really good. Wow. Thank Who you. knows me better? <laughs> I could preach on that too. Can I? <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Uh, as a as a writer, I don't always know what I'm writing about as it's happening. I have this conversation with my good friend Caleb. Hi, Caleb. He's probably watching right now. Um, <laughs> I uh, I talk to Caleb all the time about um, my work and how I feel about it and where I'm at with it and stuff. And something that we just talked about earlier today was that there are a lot of times as a writer where I feel funny taking credit for the song that I wrote because sometimes. It just happens, right? Mm -hmm. Like sometimes you just sit down and have like an inkling of an idea and then it just kind of falls out. Mm. And those songs I find end up telling me so much about myself. Mm -hmm. um, this is one of those. When I wrote this song, I had no idea where it came from. I had a simple understanding of what it was about lyrically, but as I was reading back on the lyrics at the time, I was like, I don't know why I felt so convicted to say these things. And it wasn't until months and months and months and months and months later that I listened back to it and I was like, oh, 
I get it now. Mm. <laughs> I understand now with the perspective that I have now what I was going through then and why this came from that. So anyway, uh, this, is, uh, this is called Sweet Dreamer. find something different to say at the end of songs. You keep going, that's that one, that's that one, that's that one. <laughs> that one. DJ, DJ Cali says what, uh, and another one? And another one. Hey, that <laughs> yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> um, I have, I have three more. Um, yeah, three more. Yeah. Do you All want right, me to do one now? Yeah, do one now. Okay. This, All right. it, it's wonderful. Chad, are you guys okay with him doing another one now? I am. Uh, all right, somebody in the studio wants someone now, so that makes two of us. I'm gonna speak in the chat and see if anybody's awake in there. Space at his company. Oh, Pastel says she's vibing. All right, we're in. Look at that. They want now. Danny Rivera. Space, thank you guys so much. Look at all the look. Thank you guys for the, for the love in the chat for Charlie. All right, he's gonna give us another one. Um. This, so every other song that I've played tonight is unreleased. It'll be on whatever the new Charlie Archer record's gonna be. Um, this, though, is uh, from my old solo project, which I guess we'll talk about in a little bit. But um, this is, uh, it's called Where My Feet Are, and I just released it uh, as like the last release of my old discography, um, like a month ago-ish, maybe not even. Um, but yeah, it's just about 
being present, living in the moment, trying not to take anything for granted. Just the 
this moment if I can I could write a million stories I could dream the days away But I want to be where my feet are So that I can remember this song Charlie, that was amazing. Your <laughs> tone you. is really beautiful. Uh, like your vocal tone, uh, you. your vibrato, like, and I want to know where my feet are. Like your vibrato <laughs> is very nice, man. Thank you. God, I Thank could listen you. to you all day. You got a good voice, man. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, so one sweet. more time. Give it up for Charlie, man. <laughs> Golly. <laughs> so good. Dude, okay. We're writing songs in parking lots. <laughs> we're writing songs on ideas. We're writing personal songs. We're, we're doing it all. Mm -hmm. uh, have you always been like so uh, driven to write songs? And where does that come from? Um, honestly, yes. I, I mean, I've been writing songs since I was a little kid. Okay. You know? Now, they were terrible, as they are. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but I always found myself uh, writing um, about anything that came to my mind when I was little yeah then I really got away from it um I started pursuing acting and that was really my focus for I don't know like a, a decade of my life probably mm -hmm. um and I loved that craft a lot and it taught me a lot about expression and it taught me a lot about the nuance of emotion um and also how to communicate with people in a lot of different ways so I found myself Eventually, when I hit the wall of acting, being like, I don't know if I want to do this anymore, um, the first thing I did was turn to writing. And I would be in the practice rooms at school every day, all day, until all hours of the night, I would get kicked out by security. Like, it was that oh, sort of wow. thing. Oh, wow, okay. Um, and, and I was just writing out of necessity. Like, yeah. I, was, I was in a place where I didn't really want to be there anymore. I didn't want to be doing that thing anymore. I wasn't feeling fulfilled artistically. Um, and I needed something, you know, I really did. I was in a bad place. And so I just found myself writing all the time. And um, in terms of where that comes from, I, I think it really comes back to what I was saying about like my means of navigating life is what mm -hmm. music is to me. Yeah. And, um, you know, we've all lived through our respective hard times and, and I have too. And, and this was the best and healthiest way to navigate that and it was also something that was really constant for me like yeah. it didn't feel even when I returned to it after you know spending all that time focused on acting um it didn't feel like a foreign thing to me you know mm -hmm. it really still felt like a part of me yeah um yeah that's amazing yeah your way of it's your mean way of means you say of yeah, navigating the, life my means of navigating life. means yeah. of navigating life yeah. yeah, that's cool. So you've used music as a way to uh, basically keep you sane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's, that's, that's simply put. But yeah, uh, that is, that's cool. I like that you think about it that way. Because in that there is purpose. Yes. You know, there's, yes. there's a lot of purpose lined up in that because it helps other people when they hear your stuff. Yeah. Uh, and that's beautiful. That's really cool. Um you had a song, I think it may have been the third, it was the third song, it was. I'm trying to remember what that song was called. Who Knows Me Better? Is it Thank you. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, tell me a little bit more about that song there, because you said that was one that wasn't written in just a week ago. No, I wrote, well, it was like two months ago now. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but um, yeah, I, I just went through a huge change in my life. I, I'd been living um, just outside of Baltimore for the last mm -hmm. four or five years or so. Um, and I had really established a life there. You know, mm. I had a long-term partner, and, and I had my gig scene that I was in and my yeah. musician circle that I was a part of. And um, Yeah, it, it, was, it was a place I didn't expect to be, uh -huh. um, but I found myself there. And while it was beautiful and fulfilling in a lot of ways, um, I also found that I was missing parts of myself that I used to chase mm. you know and i feel like i stopped chasing them yeah um and i, I think that comes from being comfortable like yeah. i was very fortunate um to <laughs> the house that we were renting was like 
way underpriced. And yeah. so I was like, I felt like I was living large, you know? Like Man, I don't had, you miss that? <laughs> I do miss oh, that. God, yeah. um, but I, I look at that chapter of my life and, and I don't see anything to work towards. Mm, you know, I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. I saw myself at a place that um, I had been dreaming of being at, yeah. but I didn't expect to get there at 23, 24. Wow. Um, so when that happened, I found myself feeling really unmotivated. I took almost a two full year break from releasing anything. And, oh my gosh. Um, yeah, it, it was, it sounds like the, the the darkest time ever. It was a hard time, but it was also full of a lot of beautiful things. And yeah. that's kind of what that song comes from is, yeah. is um, uh, you know, the beauty of being in a healthy relationship. And, mm. and then also what that feels like after the fact, you know, still feeling like what happened was for the best, yeah. but, but no one, um, you, I think you just forget the intimacy yeah. of a relationship like that. You That's know, true. When you've been with someone for so long, yeah, they really do know you better than anybody. Yeah, and um, and when you get to a place in life, like I got to, where I felt like I really didn't know myself. Yeah. Um, and then I'm out here, and I'm not in that relationship anymore, and and I'm trying to discover more about who I am, and that song came from a place of like. You know, that lyric of um, there's parts of me that believe she's gonna find me first because who knows me yeah, better. Sing that, that, yeah. Yeah, it's, that was um, nice. That uh, was on the other guitar, guitar, wasn't it? It was the other guitar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, wait, I can do it here. Um, uh, no, I can't. It's the wrong tuning. I tuned it funny for the other song. I was gonna ask you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, take your time. Yeah, switch them. Switch em. <laughs> can I unplug this? Cool. I was gonna ask you the, the the reason, but that would make sense. You had two in different tunings, therefore you wouldn't have to tune in the middle of the show. You can just pick one up. If it goes according to plan. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. I guess uh, also, what what is the brand of that guitar again? What's the name of that guitar? This one? Yeah. This is Seagull. Seagull. It's Canadian. Yes. A lot of uh, guys in the Midwest will play those. I love this guitar. And I haven't seen one in a very long time. That's why I asked you that. This is my first guitar. I've had this guitar for like probably like 12, 13 years. Wow. Like that. Okay. Yeah, this is my yeah. first one. And I got really lucky. This was like a gift from a family friend who okay. had way too many guitars and was like, ah, oh, you can take this one. Yeah. Um, and I've had it ever since and I love. That's cool. Yeah, that's a good guitar right there. It sounds beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, Wh- what was that line? Oh, I, I got to hear that line. Yeah, that was nice. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Who knows me now? Uh, I see. There's parts of me that believe she's gonna find me first Cause who knows me better? Man, yeah, that's <laughs> nice, man. Thanks. <laughs> who knows me better? <laughs> oh, it's so good. Uh, what, what key would that technically be in? Uh, this is like open D flat. Okay, open D flat. Yeah. So you, it's not necessarily dad gad, it's like D flat again. Yeah, 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 like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I, it sounded low, and when you hit that low string, I said, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is low. Dang, man, that's cool. Um, I my phone died, so I can't see the uh, chat. So I would uh, need somebody to help me with the. But I do remember one of the questions, and it was one of my questions. Uh, Space Monkey asked. Uh, she said, "You usually uh, do you usually write your songs in a parking lot?" And she put, "LOL." Uh, what's your favorite place to write songs Ooh, at? That's a fun question. Thank you for asking that. Um, I don't usually write in a parking lot or a park or anywhere outside of my home typically. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, I, I live in an apartment building. And okay. before, for the last couple of years, I was in a house. Yeah. So I could be as loud as I wanted to yeah, be and yeah, all that yeah. stuff. And I didn't ever feel self-conscious that someone might be hearing me right. write the worst song of all time. <laughs> um, <laughs> right, right. So, I, uh, in that scenario, I was like, I just needed to go touch some grass. So yeah, I went yeah. out to the park and, <laughs> and, uh, and wrote for a little while. And that's where that one came from. Typically, my favorite place to write, um, I don't know, anywhere, honestly, anywhere that I'm alone. Like, I really struggle with co-writes because mm. I really get in my head yeah. feeling like, 
you know, like maybe there's a scenario where someone reached out to me because they like my writing and they're right. like, I would love to write with you. And it's like, okay, well now there's an expectation of my writing. Yeah. I feel like I got to bring my A game to the table, but my A game is so much trial and error. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah. so much bad idea, bad idea, bad idea. There's something. Yeah, you're <laughs> you right. Know yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Which is, that is difficult. Yeah. Because it, it does show a, one, it shows humility, but two, there's this, uh, um, there's an insecurity that you are laying down, a sense of trust to that person to see you at your worst moment in a way. Yeah. Because you are constantly thinking and not coming up with good ideas, and then there's one. And then there's that one day where you are, like, everything you say is like treasure. It's like $100 million. Yeah. And then right, right. the next day it's like, all I got is five cents. And, yeah. uh, you know, but that that's the beauty of it. I, I struggle with it so much until I would say the last two years I've started to get into it. And I just had to keep doing it, make myself do it. Because everybody yeah. wants socially, people are like, let's get together and write. Yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah. like, how about no, let's go get food and talk. <laughs> Yeah, I'll take I don't want to fucking write today. I want to just <laughs> chat and eat and leave, leave the fuck alone. But, uh, but you know, I'm learning to to be more LA ish. And Nashville's even worse. It is like God. Everybody wants to write, write, write as, as a social mm. project or at church. I can't stand that either. So my church people, please don't ask me to write. Just say hi to me. <laughs> uh, I will do my best. I sometimes forget. Uh, that's the only one. Okay, great. Um, studio snack. What's your favorite studio snack? That is from Pastel. Our, uh, that's her classic question every week. Listen, listen. There are, there are two studio snacks that come to mind. Okay. And it's because I have a vivid memory of eating them in the studio and thinking, this is the life. One of them is a box of white cheddar Cheez-Its. Um, wow. <laughs> and, and the other one is an apple fritter. I love apple, apple fritters. fritters. Like from just like a bakery, like a donut Just like place. Where, wherever the closest apple fritter is, you yeah. can get it. And you bring Man, it. Man, a good apple fritter actually <laughs> is something I haven't had in a while too. So good. God, that's true, yeah. So good. Yeah, it's not It's not a bear claw. It's better than that though. Mm -hmm. Wow. Hey, apple fritters. Let's, <laughs> let's go get take one. Note, yeah, note. yeah, take note. That's cool. I've never, we've never gotten that one before. White cheddar cheese, it's as well. That's a new one for studio snacks. That's for like a long session. That's yeah. where we're like, when you're going to be there all day and you're going to finish the box. Get the box. Yeah. yeah. Get, <laughs> get the, the box. Get the box. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Somebody said, ooh, white cheddar cheese, it's yes. <laughs> Yum to both. Okay. So we got a witness in the chat. I see. I like that. Um, that's cool. Okay. I have been dying to ask this question. I really want to know it. And I've been trying to wait till we got because we talked earlier this week and you said that there was a name change coming yeah. regarding your artistry mm -hmm. separating from your uh government name <laughs> which is logan <laughs> like, right yeah. uh yeah. but okay tell us why and tell us why this happened and tell us uh why the name sure unless they are both the same answer not no not quite the okay. same answer um so there are logistical reasons, and then there are um, creative and artistic reasons. Uh, logistically, there are so many other Logan Smiths in the world. Yeah. And um, I have found, I, it's been a problem along the way, actually. Mm. Like, when I first released music, it ended up on a different Logan Smiths page. Oh, wow. I had to fix that. Um, that was so many years ago now. Yeah. And then I was, I was touring in 2019, and uh, we were playing One Stop in DC, and I was doing like a morning news spot to like promo the show. Yeah. Um, and I'm standing off on the side. The two news anchors are like giving their spiel about me before I come on. Yeah. Um, sort of introducing me. And I look up and there's a TV like in the corner that has what's on the broadcast. Yeah. And on the broadcast, so th the other, there's one other Logan Smith in particular who makes bluegrass gospel music. Um, <laughs> and, what? Okay. <laughs> and, and, um, and I look at the broadcast, and it said, Gospel Singer Tours in D.C., and I'm about to walk on. Wow. And they've gotten me mixed up with this other Logan Smith, thinking that I'm the gospel singer. Yeah. And, and, and I am standing there, like, so bamboozled. I have no idea what to say. Get because, out. But what am I going to do? It's already on there. It's already, that's, the, that's a live feed. Yeah. You know? So that sort of thing so, happened. So this specific gig you were doing, they're expecting that Logan Smith? I, I don't, I don't know. I think what happened was they did a quick Google search when they saw Logan Smith coming to the city to tour. Okay, okay. And they were like, "Oh, Logan Smith," and they saw the bluegrass gospel yeah. singer. Woo. And so I was like, "Say that would be a hell of a spin." Like you come out and you are not bluegrass, <laughs> folky, 
Like, I'm just wearing <laughs> suspenders with no shoes and socks. <laughs> About to give you a gospel perform <laughs> Lumineers performance, <laughs> man. Yeah, it was. Um, it was not. Uh, yeah, it was something. Yeah, was something. that's funny. Um, so that's those are logistical reasons. Okay. Um, and then artistically, I started releasing music really quickly after I realized I could. Um, mm. And I, I wouldn't change anything. I don't believe in regret, which is a controversial topic, but I don't believe in regret. Yeah. Um, I. I think that how it happened is how it was supposed to happen. Mm. Um, so I wouldn't change it. But I do think that had I been more patient, had I um, been more diligent to surround myself with more people who were doing what I wanted to be doing, yeah. um, that I might have had better perspective on the timing and um, the execution of some of that stuff. But uh, I find myself now listening back to that discography and feeling really disconnected from it. Um, mm. It's really, it's still very impactful to a lot of people, and so I'll always appreciate and and be grateful for those songs for that reason. Um, I've met some incredible, kind, loving souls over the years, just like it shows, who like came out to hear the tunes, and mm. and um, you know I'm so grateful for that chapter in my life. But I've over the last four or five years, um, I've gotten so much better. I've gotten so much more. Um, understanding of the craft and how it works from a production aspect, from a writing aspect. I feel like I know who I want to be as a writer now. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, the composer um, Stephen Sondheim, but he writes a lot of theater stuff. Mm. Um, and when he was younger, he was sort of like apprenticing um, uh, Oscar Hammerstein, who wrote the musical Cinderella. Yeah. Um, it's one of my favorites. It's a great one. It's yeah. a great one. And uh, I'm probably botching this story, but essentially um, Oscar Hammerstein told Stephen Sondheim, who was very young at the time, to write three musicals and gave him three different criteria. Like this one write something, you know, totally outside of the box. And this one write something that's only, you know, two characters. I don't know, something like that. You give him some restrictions. And then he said, by the end of the third one, you'll, you'll know your voice. Mm. Um, and I feel like my discography under my old name, Logan Smith, uh, that is really a sonic representation of me trying to find my voice as yeah. a writer. Yeah. Um, and now I feel like I've found it. Right. And so that's... Part of you know coming to LA, really doing a full factory reset on my life. Yeah. Um, it felt like the right time to pick a new name and, and to start anew. Um, and uh, I chose Charlie Archer. My first name is Charles, um, which no one in my life calls me that. Okay. <laughs> Charles. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've always gone by Logan since I was a little kid. Yeah. Charles is my grandfather's name. Oh wow, um, cool. But when I was uh, in high school and stuff, I always thought someday I might go by Charlie. It feels like a more distinguished name, if you will. Yeah. Um, so I thought maybe when I'd get older, then I'd age out of Logan and do Charlie. And then the Archer half of it, um, I wish it had deeper meaning. It really right. doesn't. I, I literally, I, I, I like vowel sounds when I write. Like right. a lot of my lyrics, there might be better lyric choices in terms of impact, but I'll choose the vowel combination that fits better yeah. than the better l lyric, if you will. Right. Um, so I knew I wanted something that started with like an ah vowel. And so I went through it, like I just started reading last names that yeah. were like atypical. Um, and then uh, I saw Archer and I was like, oh, I kind of like that. Like it's not uh, like a super common last name or anything. It sort of stands alone. There's imagery with it. Um, my favorite movie character as a kid was Legolas in Lord of the Rings. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. so I figured I might as well just go with Archer. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Wow, that's a good story behind that change there. And yeah, you, you're. I love the uh, the story you share about Hammerstein talking to the uh, younger composer because mm -hmm. it is true. Uh, you you evolve over time. Yeah. And that's there's nothing wrong with that. Mm. Uh, I literally. I remember when I started, I started out as a gospel singer. So I've been singing gospel all my life. And uh, my name was under Darius Knee. But when I got into the stage where I started doing music under Bishop, I started realizing not to totally forsake those old those older moments. Because when I listened back, I was like, yeah, you were figuring stuff out. Mm. And yeah. in that time, it was perfect. Mm. It was perfect. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was perfect. So I'm sure the Logan stuff lives in a great space, and we're excited about 
what's going to come out of Charlie, especially these songs from the parking lot, for sure, <laughs> <laughs> at the park. But yeah, that's unique. Thank you for sharing that. Um, uh, I think, oh, I got to ask you this question. It's a question we ask every artist that comes over on the show. Um, obviously, you have an incredible voice and you play guitar well, so I can't wait to hear uh, your answer to this. We ask each artist, what are your what is your Mount Rushmore music? So when it comes to music and singing, uh, let's go there and then I'll do a second one for like composers and stuff. And, and so you're looking musicians. for artists. Yeah, let's go artist route. Your Mount Rushmore, four people there. Wow. That is such an impossible question. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it um, is. It, it, it hurts every time. Okay, I'm going to say Billy Joel. Um, wow, that's a first. I, I think... And what a great one. I think Billy Joel, in my mind, really revolutionized what a pop song is. Yeah. Um, and... It really stands the test of time. And also, he also hates half his discography, so I really resonate with that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, I love that. Yeah, wow, I haven't heard that name in so long. Like, <laughs> our co my college professor was obsessed with him, so <laughs> I feel like every lesson was either him or Bruce Springsteen or uh, mm, mm. Bob Dylan. That's our freaking every like songwriting lesson we had was listening to their stuff. Mm. That's cool. Okay, keep um, going. Okay, so Billy Joel... Uh, Man, okay, I'm going to change my mind about all of this probably tomorrow. That's but, okay. Um, I also really love Dan Fogelberg, who's like a 70s cat. Mm. And um, he has that song, uh, Leader of the Band is Tired, or whatever that is. Um, but he has a really old record prior to that, um, and he has this song called Wisteria. And honestly, that song is like the blueprint of the Charlie Archer sound for me. Like the, mm. at least from a guitar standpoint, mm -hmm. like the song that I played Sweet Dreamer mm -hmm. was super inspired by the voicings that he was choosing on the song Wisteria. Um, so I really would put him up there. Also vocally, he does so many great harmony stacks that yeah. really weren't being done by individuals at the time. Like he yeah. tracked all of his own harmonies and stuff. That's cool. Um, yeah. Wow, okay, so, that's a first too. Look at right. that. Billy Joel, Dan Fogelberg. Um, uh, God, this is so hard. Sorry, you're two away though. You're almost, you're almost to. I know, I know. To the promised um, land here. I also feel like I have to say. I think, I have to say, um, Michael Jackson and Paul McCartney, and I have to say both wow, of those. Oh, good. Because okay. Because Michael, um, obviously was the force that he was, yeah. but. Um, what he accomplished, especially with his early discography, like the Thriller album mm -hmm. is, and everyone knows what that album is because it was one of the best-selling albums of all time, but, yeah. but if you really like sit down and listen to that record, yeah. um, the stuff that's going on on the sides and the stereo field and the modulation choices that he makes, and it's, it's all so creative and also intentional. And yeah. um, I think that his discography gave permission to so many other young writers mm -hmm. um, who ended up coming up later in the 80s and 90s and stuff to be um, unapologetic yeah. with, with their art. And I feel like that's really something that Michael was, was unapologetic, uh, what he uh, believed yeah, in. He believed in so, um, king, the king of pop. King of pop. So yeah. Michael for that reason. And then Paul McCartney. Um, another legend. Another legend, yeah. I, yeah. I just think that for, for me... Um, I can listen to a song like um, like She's Leaving Home from mm. Sgt. Pepper's and I can hear that and then I can hear Hey Jude and Let It Be and I can experience such a vast array of emotions mm. um, from his writing and also what that band did for music production as well. Like their needs and... Um, <laughs> their stubbornness at times forced innovation for the recording world and mm. um there are techniques that i use every day in my own writing and production that they pioneered you know so mm. yeah i guess i guess those are my big four i feel like i'm gonna again i'm gonna change my mind about that yeah. probably tomorrow <laughs> that's but, all right yeah yeah that's a good four uh, yeah michael of course is, is definitely a beast mm -hmm. uh and then man paul mccartney golly I, I feel like when Paul McCartney, Beatles, they don't get 
the love they should sometimes to me i feel mm. like that uh, but i love their music um and also michael jackson is just you listen to his, that dude sang sang for real yeah and when he got in the studio he was making stuff happen for real mm. but a lot of these guys they have no idea what it means like what they're even playing he knew how i'm making that because they didn't have all the software we have right now so right. to make that kind of music then was like Man, I was listening to uh, The Way You Make Me Feel the other day. Clean, <laughs> clean, clean, clean. Yeah. Also was laughing. Have you ever seen a video of him singing with all the different artists and We Are During the, the World? Real, yes, yeah. and he's standing in the back like... <laughs> <laughs> he, was, yes. he was legit like how are most of you guys artists which is also very funny because when you listen to those people in their own right doing what they do with mm -hmm. their music it made sense but in that song it in that moment it did not make sense mm. until whatever producer i don't know if it was quincy jones or what put that together it started to make sense but when you listen to that stuff isolated um i understand why his face was like that <laughs> yeah <laughs> right, yeah right, right. i get it i get it uh welcome to woke house everybody my name is bishop and uh we're sitting here with charlie archer uh you're getting some love in the chat man uh roman Banks says i love charlie archer uh someone <laughs> else said earlier something about this guy uh in quotations, said you would know what that meant. Uh, yeah, okay. hi, Danny. He knows. <laughs> he knows. Okay. I don't know. Uh, I'm not going to even ask about it. Um, <laughs> did somebody else ask another question in the chat before I move on? I don't. What color would I say describes, describes your music? music? That's a great question. Thank you, Pastel. Can I pick a color palette? Sure. Okay. Since I made you give us four artists. <laughs> on the spot. Yeah, yeah, we'll... On the spot. Um, okay. So I would say like, um, <laughs> this is funny. I have a, an app on my phone, a game where I color match with paint. Like really? it's really stimulating for my brain. So okay. this is funny. This is um, a great question. <laughs> this is a great question. So I would say like a, um, a, a deep blue with a silver splash in there and I would say um, like a, a earth tone peach and um, deep blue splash of silver, earth tone peach, and then like a very, um, uh, what's the word, uh, glowy white, very glowy white. Not mm. just like plain white, but like something that really like shines wow those are my answers that sounds like the beyonce tour a little bit <laughs> <laughs> except for the peach yeah wow that's cool do you like beyonce yeah i like you're beyonce. not talking to a bay high person so i won't be offended if, yeah I'll... i think it's i think it would be uh wrong at this point to not like beyonce i think i, agree with that I think statement. we all need to just get on board and say beyonce yeah. changed the game yes and beyonce is still changing the game yes <laughs> And Beyonce has earned her flowers. A thousand That's percent. It. And I can <laughs> agree it. with that statement. I am not like a, oh my gosh, Beyonce just walked. Well, I would be if she walked in here. Uh, so let me change that statement. <laughs> I probably would shit myself if yeah, she walked in Beyonce here. walked in. Yes. We're ending the show. I think We're everybody stopping. probably would if she walked in here. I don't care. If you don't like Beyonce, if she walked in your house, you would shit yourself. <laughs> Fair, fair. And you're lying if you're saying you wouldn't. And you're lying. Yeah. Um, but no, I have a respect for Beyonce. I love Beyonce's husband. Uh, Jay-Z yeah. is my favorite, just as far as business-wise. I would say he's a big inspiration to me. Yeah. Uh, doing a record label. He's just a GOAT. And he's very quiet. He does his thing. And he's just on top when it, of the game when it comes to business and all those things. Uh, but Beyonce I love because she's just not afraid to push the line. I've always been like that ever since she was a kid yeah. and coming out with Destiny Child and all that stuff. So I've always had respect for her. She is not my favorite, but I do have a big respect for who she is. Um, as well as the other ones, like Taylor Swift, I have a respect for her. I would never listen to her sing, but as far as write a song, <laughs> she can write a song. What? Is that bad? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm, I am a singer, so when I hear a singer, I know a good singer when I hear one. <laughs> uh, and also, I'm a writer, and I hear I know a good writer when I hear one. A girl can write a song. Um, so shout out to her. Uh, I just so I was in this conversation this week about these communities that are insane. Uh, do you know who the Barbies are? No. That is um, uh, 
what's her what's give me give me some of the rappers not cardi b thank you that's Nicki minaj's crew okay so if you said anything on twitter like about her that is against her the barbies uh, will come out and they will yeah Yes. No, that they, tracks. That tracks. Yes, they will knock you out with yeah. some suntan lotion. Just smack you with it. Um, a lot of fan bases online are like that these days. They really, really are. A lot of them are, especially like the younger crowd, like the TikTok crowd. Oh, yeah. The power that they have is See, I don't unreal. even mess with them. I stay in my... I'm, <laughs> listen, I don't even... Try, that TikTok, I'm learning, but it's like, Jesus, it's so far away from me. I, my head just spins. I'm getting old. Um... Uh, and there's one more I uh, learned. Oh, uh, Rihanna and the Navy, which I think is interesting. I never figured out why they call them the Navy. Yeah, I don't know either. But they are intense too. Stephen A. Smith, who was a, a journalist for ESPN and, mm -hmm. and TV host, he got on this morning show I and yeah, he this. said some crazy like about Rihanna, just this. about her Super Bowl. Just guess what he does? He comments on things. So it's like right. you can't get offended by a man whose job is made up of commenting on a subject. Sure. Man, when he said that, that Navy went crazy on Twitter. I remember seeing some. I was like, whoa, mm -hmm. like you threatened this man's life. It's just <laughs> his opinion. <laughs> oh, anyways. All that to say, the archers, that's what they'll call themselves. The uh, archers. Yeah, yeah, the archers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, they'll, they'll be crazy about Charlie. Charlie, thank you for being here, man. You are an absolute delight, and your music is really amazing. Thank you. Um, we'd love to hear a few more songs from you as we wrap this interview up. Yeah, I got, I got two more. Thank you yeah. again for having me. This is For been sure, so much definitely. Fun. Guys, you watch your Mogul House, and we have Charlie Archer here. Again, if you have not followed him, go follow him on all of his socials. You'll find it in the chat uh, where you'll be able to follow him on Instagram, all the things, find out what he's doing, if he's going to be performing anything, releasing any music, please go give him some love right now. Um, and uh, he's going to perform a few more songs. So hang tight with us, grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy Charlie Archer. Uh, this one is called In Another Life. didn't love me that's how it happened lover I'm sorry you didn't deserve it some rooms are too dark some just aren't bright enough we both played a part both still so in love I was your every morning Your every night You were my comfort in lonelier times You loved me forever And somehow I told you I've lost count All the days locked away What is left of us now Sunk into the couch With the taste of your lips on my mouth I was just what you needed You thought so at least But lover, I saw the things you couldn't see You loved me forever Lover, I don't think you needed me
just played out like that And thousands of people would have done the same thing I never blamed you, I'm begging you, don't blame me How was your happy ending? All worked out just right You were the reason I lived through that night We danced in the kitchen Shut down all the lies I fell in love over and over A thousand and ninety-five times You loved me forever But forever's a long time be yours in another life, another life, I'll be yours sometime, that's that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like a movie. <laughs> hey, I was like, a, oh. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. I would love to have my songs in a movie someday. That would be like a like a bucket list. Thing. Man, what'd you say over and over in a in ninety uh, five to something else? It was I good. I fell in love over and over a thousand and ninety five. Yes, <laughs> that was great. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, good stuff. <laughs> I love getting to play that song because it really, it surprised me. Like I played it at a song circle uh, like two or three months ago now. Yeah. And people love that line. Uh -huh. And I really didn't expect to get that kind of reaction yeah. out of that song, especially that line. That line is so specific. It's about a three-year relationship and there's 1,095 days in three years. And Shut so up. that's where that came from. And I thought no one would clock that. And people did end up clocking it. And they were like... I didn't put that together. <laughs> I, just, I just thought it sounded good. <laughs> <laughs> but right, God, cool. that even makes it even more good. <laughs> Jeez, great job on that. Thank you. There Thank was you. another line you said uh, about a happy ending. I love that too. Man, um, like you got the happy ending or something. Uh, oh, what is it? Um, Sorry, I don't mean to make no, you go good. back. That was I really was good. I was your happy ending. I was your happy ending. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> go, Charlie. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's really good. Thank you. Okay, all right. Go ahead. You, know, you can move on. Sorry. <laughs> emotional trauma in a song. What are you going to do? What We're all just do? enjoying your emotional trauma. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Look, that's why I do it. That's yeah. why I do it. My trauma helps yeah, your yeah. trauma. That's the idea. There you go. That's the idea. We're all um, navigating life over here. <laughs> um, I've got one more. Uh, uh, this one's called conversations on the carpet and that's really all there is to it <laughs> nice there's something here I feel it We shed a few tears From the feeling Oh, don't you agree This doesn't just happen To anybody We both feel so seen And you hardly know me me like you did You are my inspiration Oh, how did this happen? I've fallen in love from some conversations on the carpet I'm 
sorry in advance You didn't ask for this We both agreed to give it a chance I bet you'll regret it I'm such a mess Medicating my head for some quiet You deserve better, I say I'll forget her, I'm a lion So kiss me like you did You are my inspiration Oh, how did Falling in love from some conversations on the carpet Oh, how Thank you. Man, if that's all you got, you got a lot. <laughs> Jeez. I am very, I am, I'm speechless. That that was very beautiful. Charlie, you have an Thank amazing you. voice. Thank you. You have an amazing mind. Uh, your songwriting is really good. Just some of the stuff you said, I'm like, God, that's a really a beautiful line, man. Me too, Pastel. I love that one too. <laughs> it just made lovely. Yeah. It's like, what are they? just wow, man. You have a bright future, Charlie. How do you mind if I ask how old you are? I do mind. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, no, I, I have had. That's why I was like, okay, I'm glad I asked. Then yeah. uh, I turn 25 next month. Oh, bright future! <laughs> oh God, yeah, man, you got so much time on your hands. <laughs> Thank Bro. you, bro. So. <laughs> yes, uh, please live every moment to the fullest, especially Thank when it comes to your music, because you definitely have a gift. You know, I find sometimes we stress out about the smallest things in life. And wherever you are, I think you said it earlier that uh, you can't have any regrets. Mm. And I think a lot of that is true because every moment that is given to us is destined for us to live out. Mm. But if you take a hold of that, especially with your move here and continue to just be diligent with all of this, man, I'm sure we'll be seeing your name in lights very soon. You're amazing. That's so very, sweet. very amazing. So I said it from the bottom of my heart. I wouldn't lie to you. If I didn't mean it, I wouldn't say it. I know you would. No, I That's why it means a lot. Yeah, ask, ask <laughs> these guys. They'd be like, yeah, he's, he won't say anything at all. He would say something different. But y'all, give it up for Charlie again in the studio, all in the chat. Thank you, amazing. Appreciate you. Thank you. Man, wow, wow, wow. Oh, someone asked another question. Can we ask that question? What is the time span in which all these songs were written that we heard today? Danny Rivera asked um, that. What is the time span of all these songs were written which you heard today? Uh, Where My Feet Are, which is the one song from my old name. Um, I wrote that two years ago. Uh, and then the rest of it, the rest of it I've written since uh, May. All the, all the way up to like two weeks ago, really. Yeah. <laughs> or last, this Thursday at, <laughs> at the park. Uh, yeah. You got two years there. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Man, yeah, the chat loves you. That's so cool. Thank you. I so love much that. Everybody. Well, thanks, guys, for tuning in to Mobile House. My name is Bishop. I've been sitting here with Charlie Archer. Uh, again, if you want to follow him, uh, you can do so by clicking the link in the chat right now. Uh, and uh, go follow him on Instagram on all of his socials in general. There's a link tree there as well. 
I'm sure you can check out some of his old music as well as get ready for the new stuff too. Um, if you have not, also subscribe to uh, the Mogul House YouTube. Uh, that's where you're going to find a lot of the videos, including the VOD from today, uh, where you'll get to hear this performance and interview all the way through. Uh, there will be some videos coming out as well over the next couple of weeks, just Charlie singing some of his songs that are hits, and I want to hear all of them. So uh, it's going to be hard to decide which ones go up, but we're going to do our best to get you some more very soon. Uh, and join our Discord. If you're not joining Discord, join the Discord. There are some cool things happening there. Uh, Heath is taking some time to reorganize it, get it going, because we got some cool stuff about to happen for the community. So don't miss out on the community aspect. If you're a part of Mogul House community in general, we want you to be in a Discord. There is some exclusive content, all this stuff happening, so check it out. Uh, again, my name is Bishop, and so glad to see you guys. Uh, we will definitely keep you updated about the next coming weeks of who will be coming on the show, but until then, much love, and we hope that you have a great Saturday night. Sunbeam, Stick around for the raid. We're about to raise somebody. Copy the raid chat if you're here on Twitch, um, and let's go show another artist of love. Peace out. Thanks again for coming. Peace. Another Woo! day of the same dollar. Another figure I'll just follow. Going in circles like I lost my mind. My heart keeps running away. Ready for change, but I keep on stalling, knowing that it's a mistake. I need an escape, but you keep on calling. You're not the one I want, just the one I'm with. I know that it's hard to hear, but it is what it is. You're just a filler, not the real love. Never ever gonna be my dream she killer. Always on the run, got me tracking every lead. I'ma keep chasing till I get there. See you losing patience, I don't care. You're just a filler, not the real love. You're just a filler. Lazy Sunday, I'm day drunk. A perfect life in the short run. I'm thinking that I'll be fine and coast this bar. Then you show up. New drama, showing up with the same old problems. I can't believe I let it go this far. My heart keeps running away, ready for change. But I keep on stalling, knowing that it's a mistake. I need an escape, but you keep on calling. You're not the one I want, just the one I'm with. I know that it's hard to hear, but it is what it is. You're just a filler, not the real love. Never ever gonna be my dream she killer. Always on the run, got me tracking every lead. I'ma keep chasing till I get there. See you losing patience, I don't care. You're just a filler, not the real love. You're just.